Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, Hey, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It's week 68 and we're back. It's the new year. It's the new year. Guys, we're going to be so freaking transparent with you. We're recording this on December 21st because this needs to be out in time for the campers to get back to reality. Oop, there goes gravity. But we're going to be like traveling for the new year. Yeah, we're travelers of the world. And we're we're going to be in Massachusetts. Yeah, we're going to Philly for Christmas and then we'll be in Massachusetts for the new year. But we'll be back in New York when this airs. But we need to have it edited up in time for you because we're dedicated to our audience. We're dedicated to our campers. All that to say, we're living in the past and you guys are listening to us in the future that's a really odd concept if you really think about it it really is odd what's it like in the future are things different is it great i'm excited for a new year me too i am really excited because i know that when we record the next episode you guys aren't going to recognize me because the craziest thing is happening right now and i can feel it and like i don't even know where do i be- where do i begin to tell the cameras what's happening right now? he's hyper fixated <laughs> okay last night on december 20th was the finale of survivor 45 And I was so inspired by that three-hour finale that I watched on my brother's cable subscription that I immediately applied at 11.30 at night to be on the new season of Survivor. And they don't know it yet, and you don't know it yet, and I don't know it yet, but I'm going to be on the next season of Survivor. Like, I can literally feel I'm about to be cast. I'm going to be on Survivor. Like, can we all talk about this, campers? Like, I I, all the wilderness training that we do here at Camp Shady Birch is finally putting put into effect you don't believe me no i believe you and i'm no, rooting don't. for you no you don't no, no, i no. support you and i'm rooting for you wholeheartedly so there's this thing campers that some of you may realize in relationships you're hearing what you want to hear but there's an inflection and there's a tone and there's a look behind the eyes that says yes i'm saying out loud that i believe in you but i don't feel like you do though i don't feel like you believe that i want to do this i don't feel like you believe that i'm prepared for this and i don't like that i want to feel like you want me to do this so before i get the villain an edit that you're throwing on me. No, I'm, I'm, let me just say. It's not a villain edit if it's the truth. Let me just say, I want you to do whatever you set your heart to. And I, I'm i going to vote for you on the island. I'm going to be texting that crazy number. That's to, not how the show works. You don't vote people on the Well, island. I've only seen one season and so have you. See, Which, this is where, this that was a dig. No, campers, let's look, dissect what he just did there. That was a dig. And that was hurtful. Well, grab a shovel, bitch, because you're gonna you're on Survivor. And you're gonna <laughs> have to survive me. <laughs> okay, I'm so okay. Let me let me let me speak. I no. haven't even finished my thought yet. So I want you to do everything you set your heart to, and I'm gonna vote for you, and I'm like rooting for you the whole time. Do you guys hear that in the background? That is sirens from the police station because my pussy is on fire right now <laughs> because I'm so fired up on being on this show. And that's a sign from the universe. The universe is saying, follow your passions, follow your dreams, and it doesn't matter. You're the thing is, this is why you're not believing in me. And I know it. Can I speak on this? Uh, you're going to anyway. You're not believing that I am physically capable of handling it. And I think that's why everyone's believing right now at home. I think everybody, I'm going to, one thing about me, I'm an underdog. I've always been an underdog. And that's fine. I don't mind the edit. I don't mind the chip on my shoulder. I, you know, what? I put water and I lap it up like a dog. Okay. That's my <laughs> chip, bitch. Well, grab the overhead and a vis-a-vis marker because you're projecting, babe. Oh, wait. So here's a couple things why I believe I would be good at the show. Please. Because I'm going to defend myself because this is the jury. Why are you making this an argument? I'm supporting you. No, because I... I'm going to I'm gonna ask questions, but go ahead. T- what do you think you're going to be the best at? And I'll tell you... How about... I'll tell you... I'm freaking what. out. I'm freaking out because I feel like the reason why you don't believe in me because I feel like the words are hollow and that hurts. I feel like you're saying what I want you to hear, but I can feel that it's not... True. So you want me to give you more girth? I need girth right now. I need a girthy approval. Okay. That's what I need. Okay. What do you think you're going to be good at? I think I'm going to be really good at the relationships. I think you would be fantastic at that. You're really good at the social I aspect. Am, I am. I'm going to pat my own self on the back right now. I'm a really good friend. Mm-hmm. I'm a really you good are. friend. Okay. So I can make alliances. Okay. And after watching season 45, I'm going to be honest. Some of the the athleticism really feels like um, endurance. Endurance is something that I can mentally I can mentally endure anything. 
Yeah, so it's it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. No, it feels more like a mental game, even like some of the challenges. And this is where I'm coming into, guys. So one thing about me is that I'm not strong. Okay, I am strong willed, but I'm not physically strong. But you can change that about yourself. You can become athletic. And if you want to be a runner, you can run a marathon if you want to be that. But what you can't do, you can't build on those like natural quirks and pizzazz that I already possess. Like okay. I, that's in me. Yeah. That, I, I was I was born that way. Yeah. The sirens keep going by. It feels like my parade. I keep, I f- <laughs> Baby, it is your parade. No, but I feel like what I'm trying to say is like th- all the things that I'm not good at, I can be good at. I can learn how to make fire. I can learn how to lift a weight. I can learn how to swim. I know you, I was waiting on that one. Wait, so what do you want? You want I no, swim? I was just going to say, well, this whole time you've been so butthurt about not being able to swim and really no, just I'm getting throwing the knife in the back of anybody who tries to teach you how to swim. I've wholeheartedly with all of my love tried to help out. teach you how to swim. I'm going to flip And out. somehow we keep swimming in circles, circling the drain, if you will. My eyes are welling because I'm getting frustrated. Coming back to this conversation where you don't want to, to learn. I'm shutting down. <laughs> he's disengaging he's meredith mark thing no because someone you love we're too close you can't you can't teach me how to swim because we're too i'm gonna get mad at you i need an independent swimming instructor okay and i've been saying that for years how about i'll drive you I'm to why seeking independent swimming instruction i'm personally seeking private i want i want private okay listen I don't fly private. I swim private. And that's something about me okay. personally. So I'm going to learn privately on my own time, on my own thing. Because if I put my mind to it, I know I can do it. But I, this is the problem. When Jonathan wants to teach me how to swim, we're in a pool at a party. And he's embarrassing me in front of all my friends. And he's like, oh, just you're blocking your nose. You're freaking kidding me. And like, no, because you're not doing it with a good heart. You're doing it as a performance piece. You're making me seem like a bully. I've never said that to you. I threw you in the pool with the clothes on. And I snapped like this above your head <laughs> to get to get you to follow my voice. My, I, you know who the you know who the real villain is in this story? Who? My mother for not putting me in <laughs> swim lessons. No, I'm gonna call her out. I'm gonna okay. call her out right now because she didn't put me in swimming lessons, and now I can't do Survivor. Okay, she didn't see the foresight. She didn't have the 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 vision of me succeeding on the show. So now I have to fight against the current, like I have my entire life. In her defense, Survivor wasn't out yet. Mm, that's not her. That's her problem, not mine. Okay, so what else do you think you're going to be good at? Because I am rooting for you when we're manifesting. I think I'm going to be really good at confessionals. Like, I'm going to get sound bites. Yeah, and, you're going to get the sound bites. And they need to realize that. Like, okay, even if I'm bad at the show, I'm going to be entertaining. So if there's a casting director listening to this, you need to think to yourself, like, okay, like, you already have your athletes. You already casted your athletes. Not everyone can be an athlete. You just need someone there to give reactions and be like, ooh, and say something shady. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you you can do that for sure. So I I'm comfortable on camera. Yeah, I don't stop filming myself, mm-hmm. and I'm actually very comfortable with my body. It's like okay, like I'm not okay, I'm not chiseled, okay, but like you shoot me from any angle, it's fine. Like it is what it is. Like this is the body I was dealt. I love carbs. It is what it is. I don't care. Okay, if it comes off, if it stays on, that's just what it is. And that's one thing about this year I'm not doing. Last year I set unrealistic goals for myself to be like fit and to read. No, I'm just accepting where I'm at this year. Because that's good enough where I'm at. And if I get better, if I get stronger, if I get weaker, if I get fatter, who gives a fuck? I don't care anymore. But it would be nice to be on Survivor because it would be a dedicated 25-day process of me getting fit. Oh, my God. I'd be so snatched. I'd be eating like rice. I'd be on the beach. you be literally running. flipping on everything you just said. But No, because it would be good. I'm not, I don't need that to be happy, but like it would make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, I'm an enigma. I'm constantly changing my mind. I'm constantly flipping the script. And that's something Survivor needs. Well, I'm really excited that you're excited. Thank you. Um, I am excited. But I also just want to say that you did come in today and tell me that you got the call, even though you applied last night. <laughs> And I said, did you really? And you said, yes. And I said, no, you didn't. And no, you looked really- at me and you dead ass, you were like, yes, I did. Like, be happy for me. And I was like, no, I am happy for you. Like, it that's was- so cool. And then you said, no, I didn't get the call. So it was a test. It was a test to see his loyalty and his happiness for me. It's, it's the boy who cries wolf and you're going to cry wolf one day and you're going to be so pissed that I'm not happy for you because I'm going to think it's a lie. One thing about the boy who cried wolf, he got a book written about him because he was a legend because he spoke up. So you know what? I'm setting my I'm setting the grounds for me to be a legend, okay? Cuz you know, you know who seldom makes history? People who tell the truth. Liars make history. 
Me, Survivor 47. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the audition tape. Clip it, send Clip it in. Clip it, send it, and cast me, bitch. No, I'm excited. I'm, I'm just being, I'm joking. I'm not joking about wanting to do it. I'm joking about you not supporting me. I know you do. But I need someone to be a little real with me and like really check me. And I feel like you do check me appropriately. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I fib. I don't lie. I fib to create engagement and excitement. I came in after my haircut. I wanted to have a little fun. I was just feeling zesty and I wanted to lie. <laughs> I said, Zach will walk into a room. Like I do this at the Hamptons, but you do it on a daily basis in the house you'll come in and you'll tell a random like white lie what's to- wrong with that <laughs> when they start stacking up well i like to have a creative life and i'm a creative person and i like that and i like that you would make a good lawyer like a torah so i thought I, I honestly that's the one thing i think that if if life were to go differently and i would have been back to school and not i would have never have done marketing i would have done law yeah. i think i was intimidated but it's too difficult but i think i really believe anyone can do anything if you just believe you can you need a false sense of like delusion to do literally anything in this world because at some point you got to fake it till you make it like everybody in whatever industry they're working in has some form of imposter syndrome like they don't believe that they're qualified for it. It's like, no, baby, you did it. You can get there. You just got to like fight through those internal demons and the, that inner saboteur that RuPaul would always say. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, I could have been a lawyer. I feel like I still could be a lawyer. Yeah, for sure. I, I feel like you would. You're really organizing good with paperwork. I worked for a lawyer for a couple of years and I just know that like the excitement that happens in, you know, the courtroom is seldom and it's mostly a lot of paperwork and it's a lot of like working yeah. Late hours. Well, it would be a, a lot of Adderall for me. I just, I don't think I could do it. There's a lot of different law you can do. You can do like civil rights law. You can do prosecution. You can do like, like, I don't know, like you could do like, like Murphy's law, banker law. Yeah. Like, you could, but honestly, like think of any word in the world right now, everybody at home, everybody listening, think of any word and then just put law at the end of it. Lemon law. Lemon law. And that's when a car is bad. It's a bad. Why do they call him a lemon? Because it was sour. That car I bought was sour, gross. It didn't work. Lemon it's a sour candy. Oh my god! One time I bought a car and it stopped working. My first car, it had issues, like on the day, like forty six or something like that, and it was like just out of the lemon law. Oh no! Yeah, but that's what happens when you buy like a twenty year old car. My mom was like, "This was a lemon." I'm like, "We bought a twenty year old car, mom." Like, it was a lime when I bought it. Exactly. Anyways, that's enough about Survivor. Enough about law. We do have a little topic for today's episode that we got a little creepy on the subway thinking about. Yeah. So we were gonna do originally. It, I thought we should do like um, what we did last year, which was talking about our New Year's resolutions. But let's be honest. There's going to be a lot of people in the future who are listening to this not on New Year's and no one really cares. Everyone else is talking about it and who cares that we're going to repeat the same shit that we talked about last year. Yeah, can I just say like I'm kind of like against resolutions in a way because I just feel like it's a false pressure to put on yourself that usually, at least for me, ends in failure. So it's like, no, I'm just going to do the best I can do what I'm doing it and I'll figure it out along the way. I'm not giving myself an arbitrary list at the beginning of the year that I'm going to fail at because if I go back and listen to last year, I'm not going to be happy where I'm at right now. My one goal is to, um, to ship more. To a shit more? She's backed up. So you got to drink a smooth move. But anyway, this we're not talking about this. What we are talking Wait, should about. Should we talk about this? No. Okay. He doesn't want to talk about it right now, campers. He's being very private. See him in the infirmary. We're giving him a little tea bag, a smooth move. He'll be fine. We'll send him on his way. <laughs> we're talking about today the mysteries of the universe. <laughs> No, Let's seriously? clarify. Let's clarify you that. Said, really describe, it, describe it. Describe it. Let me just clarify what the Please. mysteries of the universe are that we're talking about. These are things that Zachariah, Counselor Zachariah and I have the ability to either learn about, understand, view with our own eyes, ears, mm. nose, mouth, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, but we're choosing not to. So these are things that we're going to go to our grave when I'm buried three feet under that uh, we just will never understand understand but we don't want to under we, we're choosing actively to be ignorant for these topics because we just like don't want to know because it's more fun in our minds to like make it up does that make sense these are our personal mysteries of the universe and there might be things that you listen and it's listening like yeah i don't know much about that and i don't want to know much about that and that's what this is all about it's discovering things that we don't want we don't care to learn more about because it's more fun to make up so when we say the first one i think you guys will understand it so our first one that is a mystery of the universe to us and always will be is the movie Rio. Exactly. We've talked about this on the show before. Rio is this movie about a little bird, and that's all I know. That's all we know. And that's all I ever want to know. I don't want to watch Rio. And we're never going to. But what we do do is listen to a song, and we say, this is giving opening scene 
opening sequence, opening credits of Rio. Yeah, like what's a good song for Rio? I'm, um, I'm, I'm it's blanking. definitely like a lot of Zach Brown band. You can jump right in. Yep. That was my song of the week when we first discussed this. So we'll just sometimes hear a song, Red Wine. Yep, that's a good one. You be that... 40. Uh-huh. I be 30. Um, and just things like that. Like we'll be like, that is definitely a Rio song, but we'll never know. And then if we do watch the movie or listen to the soundtrack, then it's what, and then it's done. And then we don't have the spirit of Rio carrying on with us. It's almost like the Polar Express, which I've never seen. So is that? And is that's that, my next. Is that your? Yeah, that way. That would be a, one of your personal mysteries of the universe. Because you're. Are you really never going to watch Polar Express? No, that one's not on my list. I'm not against it because I would watch Shh. it. We should watch it tonight because the animation is horrifying, but the story is lovely. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we'll watch it tonight. That one's not on my list, but Rio definitely is. What's next on the list? The next one. This is like more of like a me one. I feel. Okay. Shen Yun. Do you guys know what Shen Yun is? It's this like traveling show of dance and theater and performance. It's essentially about um, China before communism. Mm -hmm. That's what it's marketed as. And I nonstop see marketing materials for it. Wherever I am in the country at any point, there is a Shen Yun show coming. Right now it's coming to New York in April. If we're traveling to California, it's currently there or it's about to be there or it just left. Shen Yun is on this unstoppable force of performances and I want to see it so bad and I've been begging Jonathan for years. I have for you to take me to see Shen Yan, Shen Yan and you haven't. And now I feel like if I see it, will I be let down? So I'm glad you talked to me about this yesterday when we were on the subway. Because Why? Because you were getting me tickets? I was getting you tickets not for Christmas, but for your birthday. So should I see it? Well, I didn't get the tickets yet. So you got to you gotta tell me quick. It's on the list right now. You can take it back now if you'd like to. If not, I'm never getting you the tickets. Oh my God. I feel like I'm already on Survivor right now. Like, is what are you going to do? Idol? I don't know. Are you taking a shot in the dark? Stop it. Don't use my buzzwords against me. Okay. It's my show. Um, <laughs> I don't know yet. But for right now, on this day when we're recording, it's okay. something I believe I don't need to see because I think if I see it, I'll never be able to joke about it ever again. And right. it's like a running bit. And I like really love our bits. I have great bits. You do have great bits. You Thank always have you. great bits. You're Thank a bit you. boy. Yeah, I, I'm sure it is a wonderful show. But honestly, how mad would you be if I went to see it without you? Oh, I, I honestly, if I'm recording Survivor and I find out that you're <laughs> seeing it with somebody else, I'll flip out. I no, flip I wouldn't out. see it with anybody else. No, well, you just put that suggestion out there. That's why I said it. I could go by myself. Oh, interesting. I could. A man of the theater. Yeah. Okay, so what's next on the list? The Catacombs of Paris. You just don't want to see it? It's too spooky. It is spooky and it's probably cold. It looks chilly. It's just something that if I think about it, like I don't need to see it up close. It's it's okay in just my imagination. Have you ever seen the movie As Above, So Below? No. Okay, you guys. Campers that like spooky movies. You've probably already seen it. This isn't like a horror movie in a way where it's like a slasher. This is like a suspenseful movie about the catacombs. And I'm not even explaining what that is. The catacombs is this very ancient hidden um, tunnel system under Paris that's still active right now that has been known that people have gone in there to explore and they get lost and they never come out either due to demons or just like, I don't know, being lost and hurting yourself and then like you can't get out. It's like this very scary like tunnel system in Paris. And I think about it a lot and it's like my mysteries of the world because it's like, what should I ever go? Because they do tours, but it's like for me, I think it's too spooky and I, I want it to remain a mystery. I don't need a, a cavernous experience. I really don't. You're too tall for there. I'm You're too, too tall. tall. I did the ice caves in Iceland and that I don't cool. know how I didn't have a panic attack, but I didn't. And I was you had pneumonia. Fine. Oh yeah. I was on, <laughs> I forgot I was on a lot of medication, but I don't think I need to do one because especially on TikTok, I'll see little clips of people that yeah. is like made into like a, a little animation of what actually happened to a person who got stuck in a cavern. And I'm like, I don't need to see spelunking. Oh my God, I'll freak out. There's this girl who I see video clip. My heart is already like racing. I also had three Celsius today and a cup of coffee. But this girl, she goes like deep sea diving and she'll go spelunking under the water through like a, a rock tunnel and she's like pops out on the other What's side. What's the point, girl? I don't know. I'm like, what if you get stuck? What if you... Oh, I don't want to think about it. Yeah, I don't... We don't need to be walking around the catacombs. But oh my God, the catacombs filled with water? No. My body shape would never allow me to spelunk because I would get stuck like a muffin. 
I would be, <laughs> like a muffin. I would get corked up in that bitch. I bet pull me from the back. I'm not coming through the mud front. We're gonna have to snake the drain. Oh I still my, don't know what that means. I, they need to bring some olive oil underwater and start lubing me up because I'll be stuck in that coral. Oh my god! And then you can't breathe. Moving That's on. Scary. Next, okay, the catacombs are canceled. Ca- yeah, cancel the catacombs 2024. Cancel them. <laughs> okay, um, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. I fucking hate Game of Thrones. And we don't need another person to convince us to watch it. Okay. No. For me, Game of Thrones is forever going to be part of the mysteries of the universe because you guys will always tell me it's a great show. You should watch it. I don't want to watch it. And I think it's better that I just keep it a mystery. I don't need to know about it. It's a mystery of the universe for me. Yeah. And people are like, oh, but it's so much more than the dragons. Because my first thing will be like, I'm not into Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not into dragons. Yeah. And they're like, no, it's more than that. It's about like fucking siblings. And I'm like, well, I'm not into that either. Yeah. Why is that the lead up always? It's like, okay, you don't, I don't like medieval bullshit. And now we're talking about incest. No, thanks. And people with like shockingly blonde hair it's spooky it's scary it's giving like i don't know it's giving spooks we got what we needed to from the malfoys like we're sad thank yeah. you so much thank you if i want to look at like weirdly blonde people i'll look at the malfoys i don't need to look at anyone else thank yeah. you so much so we're all set with that um here's a here's a personal one for me a brain freeze you love it. tell tell the campers remind them what's up with your brain freeze addiction. I have never had a brain freeze in my life. I have an idea of what it feels like. Everyone's like it's a, it's an intense headache. I've had a migraine. Is it the same feeling as a migraine? You know, it's so different. And I will. I'm going to back them up, campers. If you don't believe Counselor Jonathan, he has never had a brain freeze because we've eaten the same thing side by side. At, and he eats ice cream fast. You sh- at all? You sh- you should have had multiple brain freezes. And the thing is, when it becomes so paralyzing. Like, you can't even fake it. So one thing about a brain freeze that might be similar to a migraine, because I don't really get migraines, is that it feels like like almost like sectional. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get like, that when I get migraines. I rarely get migraines, but when I've had them, yeah. Like, it'll be like almost like, cr- like cranial in the front behind your eye, and you're like, ah! You have the frontal vortex. And then you're like, wait, that was from a Wawa fucking freezy? Like, yeah. this is embarrassing. This <laughs> a was frappuccino. A, this is a cherry frappuccino, and I'm like now like paralyzed in my car in a parking lot. Yeah, but they're Quickly, though. they're fast, right? The fastest way to get away with it is to put the tongue your tongue through your mouth. Oh, I thought it was your thumb. No, cause who's lying to you? I don't. I don't know. I've never suck had your one, thumb so like a know. baby. No, you like push your thumb. You're supposed. It's pressure, right? Well, it could. I don't know. I think it's heat. Oh, so just suck on a suck on a hair dryer. Yeah, that would be helpful. Okay, so I've never had a brain freeze, and I'm I'm interested. Okay, so no, 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 I'm not interested. Because I mis- never want to have one. It's a mystery of the universe. Yeah. It's a mystery of the universe. And this one, I feel like, is not by choice. I just still don't understand why I haven't had one. Like, is there something wrong? Are there bits missing? I think campers, you all have probably been thinking it. Like, what's going on up there? Jonathan's and- never been to a party where he hasn't brought this up. This is, like, his, like, favorite bit of all time. They're like, that's interesting. We were literally talking about anything else. I'm like, hey, I've never had a brain freeze. Uh, where are you guys from? <laughs> it, it, it. You know what, though? I will say, you told me that on our first date. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> no, I did not, you, did I? Yes. That is so, hey, it tracks to this very day. It it's is like something I just want to talk about. Because it is, a, it really is a mystery of your universe. But I feel like I also haven't really tried to get one. I've like, when people have challenged Nobody me. Nobody tries to get one. Yeah, but in my stance where I say this and someone's like, well, suck on this. And they hand me a Slurpee. And I'm like, okay, let me do it. And then I don't get a brain freeze. They're like, oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've tried a couple of times like that. But I don't go out of my way to actively try on the daily to get a brain freeze. So should we do a brain freeze challenge? No, because then if I get one, there goes that one fun fact about me. I have nothing fun about me. No, you have your the thing about you. What you are riddled with fun facts. You're a fun fact king. Yeah, my I don't have any toenails. So anyway, <laughs> I didn't even say to that. You love to lie. You you love to lie. Next, moving on the list. Um, for me, this is a personal one for me. Hmm. Um, Salsa Brava, and it's a Mexican restaurant in Flagstaff, Arizona. This is niche. This is it's not that niche. If you're a Sister Eyes fan, you'd understand. <laughs> it's niche. It is. If you go on, if you go on HBO Max and you look at the during any season of Sister Wives, the top ten stream shows on HBO Max, Sister Wives is always in the top ten. It is not a niche show. It is a global phenomenon. And I know there's cameras out there who know exactly what Salsa Brava is. I know, but I'm not talking about Sister Wives. I'm talking about how niche a restaurant within a show. Yeah, because listen, this restaurant has become the the scene of so many iconic fights on the show. And it, it just holds such a special place in my memory. I think it's the only uh, restaurant in Flagstaff, Arizona that would allow them to film in. It is. And that's why everything's spicy. 
coincidentally happened at Salsa Brava. So I don't, I wanted to go so bad, but now I feel like, is it just more fun to joke about it? Because if I've been, then it's not as fun. Because now I'm constantly thinking about Salsa Brava. Yeah, it's like the lore of it. That's kind of how I felt about Vanderpump. Yeah. Like, so, I just didn't know if I wanted to go to Sir. So the, it's so similar. My love of Salsa Brava and your love of going to Sir. Do you think it heightened your love of it or took away from the allure by going? I think it heightened it. I really? definitely had, I, it changes the perspective of how I understand the layout. And you know what's crazy? I <laughs> I have never been able to understand the layout of the Jersey Shore house. It's not very big, but I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure out during, um, during COVID, we tried to like draw it on a thing. Like Mark understands it and like is trying to get me to understand it. And I'm like not putting the pieces together where everybody's room is, how the layout is. And then I see on um when they came back and did family vacation, they were like, oh, the t-shirt shop's in the backyard. I'm like, well, hold on. Everything now everything that I thought that I knew is again confusing me. So that revelation of finding out that the t-shirt shop is literally the backyard and it connects through the backyard to get to work was the craziest like upset in reality TV history that we don't talk about enough. Why was Angelina so late to work that day? It's in her backyard. It was in her backyard and they hid that from us. But yeah. um, yeah, no, I understand that there's there can be complications in the layout. For me though, I understand the layout of that. I think I've seen blueprints. I think I've looked up blueprints. Do you know the layout of Salsa Brava? Well, no, and I don't want to. I don't get too close to that. You know what I mean? I'm trying to keep that as a part of mysteries of my world. I will never go to Flagstaff. Mm, if I go to Flagstaff, I'm doing a full sister wives tour. We did fly over at one time when we were coming back from LA. And I, I was I said, zooming look, in, look, look. I was zooming into the Delta map looking for a Coyote Pass. <laughs> I said, I need, I need the mountains. I need the angels to sing to me here. I really do. Oh wait, the last one on our list is a, this is a group one, and you guys can let us know in your in the comments below what you think. Last mystery of our world is what's going on at Mount Rushmore. What's Mount Ru one? What's Mount Rushmore? Two. Where is Mount Rushmore? In a really random area. And first of all, why is Mount Rushmore giving three D printing? <laughs> like, did they three D print that and not tell us? <laughs> like, who really got up there with what a little hammer and a chisel, and they were chiseling away? Are there pictures of it really happening? How big is the scale of one of the faces? Is it like the size of a wall? Do you know what's going on behind it? It's sculpted out all of them are laying down the rest of their bodies are behind it they're and they're all laying on their stomachs like a babysitter talking on the phone with a crush and they're kicking their feet back and they never show that part of mount rushmore why not why don't they show that like george washington's little feet kicking back on the phone call calling his girlfriends thomas J. <laughs> <laughs> okay so then it begs the question it be no it's literally begging the question it's on its hands and knees begging the question who is on our mount rushmore and also this is not like a like what's your roman empire like no this is like really we're gonna put the time aside and if we could carve this on stone or have pay somebody on fiverr or task rabbit to do it for us we would definitely do that but don't put that much pressure on it because i feel like i hate when that happens i feel like like right now in this moment this is my mount rushmore my mount rushmore could change in 10 minutes but in this beautiful moment at 2 13 on december 21st at Camp Shady Birch, this is my Mount Rushmore. Okay. So that's how I feel. Okay. Let's do one. Let's do one for one. We'll go back and forth saying who's on our own. Okay. You okay. go first. I'll go first. My first one, I feel like it's a, it's a giveth. Dolly Parton. Ugh, you love her. And I knew you would Sucks. say that. I love Dolly Parton. No, you love her. I'm not saying it in a negative way. I'm sorry. I and I think she just, she stands for a lot of things that I stand for. And I think she's a beautiful person and she deserves to be carved out in stone. I agree completely. So who's your first? Jack Black. Jack Black is my Robin Williams. Oh. I don't think there's anyone who's contributed more to comedy and my joy in my life than Jack Black has. I love everything he's ever done. I think he's an upstanding citizen of America. I think he's funny. I think he's great. I love anything that's PR related to him. He's always just being a good dude. He's a good father. He's just funny. He's done things his way. He's not conventionally like the kind of person you see in Hollywood, but somehow he's remained unproblematic, talented, beautiful, funny, and amazing. And if I met him, I probably would sob because... School of Rock is my favorite movie of all time, so. I like Jack that Black. answer. I like Jack Black. I feel like he's very consistent in his, like, comedy. Yeah, he, like, knows his, he knows his, like, voice and his energy, and he brings it to everything, and anyone who's ever talked to him has been like, oh, he's a great guy. Yeah, great So he's on, my, he's on my Mount Rushmore. My next pick is Nicole Byer. Wow, you love her. Nicole I B. love Nicole Byer, and I do feel like I'm starting to repeat people uh, when we were going to have our celebrity dinner party. Now I do have two of the people from there, but I can't help it, okay? I just I love Nicole Byer. She's funny. I feel like I'm going to be friends with her one day. I'm manifesting it. Our I friend think Josh so took her pictures, so I'm like, 
we have we're one degree away i know and it's like hard because if you meet her you're gonna like tell her that you like like her so much you're just gonna like pretend that you like just like casually know who she is because you're obsessed and no i'm gonna t- i'm not gonna tell her i'm obsessed because i'm not like obsessed but i'm gonna so, tell her i love her i enjoy her i think she's funny and she she makes me giggle do you remember that i bought tickets to her her tour and it got canceled yeah, you for like two Christmases ago. And then you bought me tickets to Alaska tour and it got canceled. So we both got each other tickets to a show that both got canceled the same, like from the same holiday. So we were like, well, it kind of evens out. So we don't have to rebook it. Yeah. Well, we did end up seeing Alaska later. And then we I tried to see Nicole Byer later, but she sold out so fast at City Winery. Yeah. Wait, I love her though. I literally love Nicole Byer. So love much. you, Nikki. Uh, my next one is a camp classic. Mm-hmm. Princess Girl. Princess Girl. Because I want to see a crocodile in a bridal gown carved into stone. I want to see someone chiseling that, okay? You, yeah, good thing you can do an old white man in a powdered wig. I don't give a fuck about that. Can you chisel a crocodile? Can you, what's, what was what was her real birth? Um, Cayman. Uh, Cayman. Can you chisel a Cayman? So that begs the question, how far out is, is her nose sticking? Because she oh, has like her mouth, it's going to be protruding. It needs to be because at this point we have 3D printing and that's what's going back to it. it, it all, the life always goes back to, can it be 3D printed? And that's something I've always noticed about my life. Can it be 3D printed? So we, we have the technology now to really give her a larger than life personality. I want her to have cartoon lips. I want her to really be talking and gabbing. I want her to be in full Vera Wang bridal couture. Oh, I love that. Yeah. All the way down the canyon. All the way down. Oh my God, it drapes from sea to shining sea. From sea to <laughs> shining sea. That's beautiful. Right. I love that. She's my number two. Um. Okay. My, I'm a, am I on number three? Yeah, you're on number three. Okay, my number three is Tara Reid. And it's, honestly, it's not because I, I like her. I don't really like, I don't. She needs a win. I think she needs a win and I think we just need to talk about her a little bit more. I think that's all she really needs. And I'm like, part of me wants to root for her. <laughs> no, I, well, and I think that's all I can say. One thing about us, I hear at Camp Shady Birch, and if you're a camper her, you need to be on the same page with us. We all, as a camp community, need to be collectively like, like rallying around Tara Reed because she needs it and we need it. And I want her back because I think she's, I think she wants it. I think she, I think she definitely wants it. When she was on Special Forces. Yeah, that was sad. Her edit was like so funny. And I don't think it was meant to be funny, but you can't help but like laugh. Mm. So I think she needs a win. And I don't think that that's the way that she needs to be portrayed the next time. So we're yeah. going to we're gonna carve her out in the stone and just remind the land. Is she going to be in the outfit with all the spades? <laughs> I mean, all the diamonds. <laughs> Has that picture of her. It says, queen of hearts. I want to bring this energy to every role that I play. Somebody retweeted it and said, all diamonds. Every card. She was wearing a costume and it was uh, the Queen of Diamonds and she thought she was the Queen of Hearts. But you know what? That's just a detail that we can slip past. But honestly, I do feel like maybe if we do carve her up there, we'll we'll put a couple of diamonds in there. Yeah, because you have to think about if it's a celebrity, like what like what Dolly Parton would it be? Like you have to think about like what image it would portray. Oh, I know exactly the one. It's the one that's on the cover of the book, that the coffee table book that you got me that I have a tattoo of. And that's the one that she wants too. That's like, uh-huh. the one she uses the most. And you know what's yeah, but she uses the most as of recent. She she hadn't used that picture a lot because when I went to go get my tattoo, I was looking for like a more unique. I mean, I know it's not like that unique, but I was looking for a more rare picture of a younger Dolly Parton that hadn't been seen mm. much. It was when she put the book out like a year or two later that then I've been seeing it everywhere because she uses it on her perfumes and everything. She's a gorgeous, gorgeous gal. And I love that picture of her. So I would definitely go for that one. I like that a lot. So who do you have next? Um, Tiffany H B I C Pollard. Love that. I just need some representation in um, reality TV. It, this is a woman who has like not only like paved the way, but wrote the book on how to maintain um, just charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and attitude. Yeah, and, and she's not even RuPaul. And her, her, how she started out is so crazy. I don't know if it's true, but I remember seeing um, yeah. an interview of her, and she was kind of just picked off the street in she conversation was, she was so new, crazy on the street they were like new york they were like this girl's wilding out on the phone she's got to get on tv and i just actually think she's very funny and very talented she and is. she just has always made me laugh in any show she's ever been on she knows how to read a bitch down 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 and i want to see her full scale on stone i think she'd be beautiful i love that i love honestly it just it feels so good knowing that we like are sharing the same time frame on this planet i know i think her. we'll meet her one day too i can really feel that in my bones yeah. i think that she's definitely always around the gaze too yeah she's a real ally and i need an ally up on my on my mount rushmore and you know who else is an ally that i'm putting on my mount rushmore who clara bell cow yeah you need her up there i do i feel you like do. i can't go on for too much longer about about her no you know? i think you can go on forever and i could 
And maybe, and, and, and I would, but we are here for a limited time and we do have some things we need to get done today. So I'm just going to leave it at the fact that Clara Bow Cow is, is that bitch. She is that C-U-N-T and I love her and I think she needs to be up there. Agreed. I completely agree. Who's last on yours? My last um, um, mention of the Mount Rushmore is it's an Italian sub. <laughs> just the same much I don't need it to be a person I need someone something that's really genuinely like made my life better and it's been Italian subs they've always been there for me I know exactly how I want it I want it in a 12 inch I want it toasted I want it with provolone cheese I want the meats the works I want a little bit of oil and vinegar I want the lettuce to be shredded I want tomato I want red onion diced thinly or like sliced thinly and I want banana peppers and I want it to be toasted well done because it's gonna get a little soggy with that oil and vinegar so I need to have a little bit more crunch and I think about Italian subs every single day. I think about a lot of things every single day. I'm one thing about me. I'm constantly thinking. <laughs> that's, what, on up here. that's what made me fall in love with you, truly. But my question is, um, so I'm looking at it in my mind's eye, right? So how is it straight up and down? Is it hot dog style? Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. It's got to be. See. It's got to be. Is it the whole sandwich or is it like half? Maybe you could do like part of it. It could look like it's coming out of the, the wrapping. Or I was the, or thinking of it like I would love it to look from like a raw rock standpoint. And then it's like protruding right from the raw rock. So it's like a really harsh contrast from the natural earth. And then the sandwich coming from the earth. So I'm working, okay. currently I'm working with an architect. I wasn't going to say this out loud. Mm. I'm working with an architect that knows people at Mount Rushmore. And, and it's, let's just say it's looking really good. We've right got now. some additions. <laughs> uh. They're doing some, they're currently taking out some trees on the side and <laughs> it's looking good there. <laughs> okay. Well, let's just, should we get back into the, should we get on with the show? Oh my God. This isn't the whole show already? No. <laughs> I'm just it's joking. only been like 45 minutes of us gabbing. <laughs> <laughs> let's get to it. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to Morning Announcements 2024. Woo! This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might have missed that we need you to spread like wildfire. But not real wildfire because this is a fictional camp and we do not want the camp to burn down. Jonathan, will you start us off today with your little article? Of course. So my article is coming from foodandwine.com, and it's by Brad Jaffe. I love food and wine. I'm going to love this article. Yeah, foodandwine.com. So the article title is, This New Doritos Liquor is More Than Just a Cheesy Gimmick. I'm actually hating this article already. This is vile. Ew! <laughs> what know. is this? That's why I was like, okay, I have to read. So the article itself is a little old, but the reason I'm reading it now... I will get to. I'm just going to read the opening line. Nacho cheese Doritos have been a staple of the snack food aisle for nearly a half a century. Now they're headed to the liquor shelf. I said, who the fuck wrote that? Because I'd like to shake their hand. Someone had a fresh cup of coffee and a dream. Yeah. And they got they got their fingers to the keyboard. Mm, they, got, they, got, they fingered these words so eloquently. Of course. So Doritos has partnered with Empirical Spirits to release an 84 proof Clear liquor. <laughs> what, 84 proof? Yeah, that smells and tastes like the real thing. So I have a question. Why 84? Why not 85? Yeah, like what is that? Like once again, another thing to add to the mysteries of the universe. Who's coming for the proof? Because you could say any proof and I'd be like, okay, that's the proof. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the liquor aisle because 99 bananas, I know 99 proof is, that's a lot. I know it's intense, right? Yeah. But what is proof? No one explain it below. If you do, you're going to ruin the illusion. No, and, and that's one thing we're going to ask you to do right now. Do not explain anything we've talked about on the show because we need these to be a mystery. Yeah. So 84 proof. Congratulations. The smell is really getting to me. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, it's the cheesy one. It's not the it's not the cool ranch. And I wish it was the, the purple bag. That's my favorite, but. Sometimes that one's a little too spicy. I think it's got a little sweet undertone. Anyways. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this guy, his name is Lars Williams. First off, I fucking love the name Lars. Yeah, you're not meeting enough Lars nowadays. No, I um I used to know him back in the day, but we won't talk about him. So this guy named Lars is, quote, ensuring the integrity of the new creation. Okay. Quality Loving control. Quality simply quality control. We needed somebody on quality control from Doritos. Somebody here. Better fucking control con control the quality. We need to hire somebody here at Camp <laughs> Shady Birch for quality control. Because yeah, because the quality's up and it's down. It's up and it's down. We never know where the quality's at here. Yeah, you better hold on to this episode because the next episode it's going to be bad. It's going to be skipping. There's going to be sounds in the background yeah, unless we get someone on quality control. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so Lars is a former chef at the now sell. Self-avowed, oh, I'm sorry, and self-avowed flavor expert. Can you tell? I didn't write that. Our researcher did. 
who spent time at a bougie Michelin star restaurant in Copenhagen called Noma, which is now unfortunately defunct. If you were planning on going this weekend, cancel your plans. It closed? It closed. So how good could it have been if it closed? Well... Sorry. That's a great question. So sad to see it go, but happy to see Lars going on to bigger and chatter. Pause for laughter. So now he's- Did you write that or did they write that? I wrote that. That was clever. Thank you. It was cerebral. Thank you. Uh, So Lars is working with empirical (laughs) spirits and he's steering the company towards uncategorized spirits. I get it. I think it's a hole in the market. I don't think it's going to live long, but I do think this can like really transcend to anything. I was going to say, this isn't my flavor, mm-hmm. but there probably will be a flavor I'll try of something else. Oh, I would try this 100%, 84%. It's <laughs> a little proof joke. So <laughs> um, basically, he has the freedom to be like, hey, Doritos, I love Doritos. Let's reach out to them and you know try it out in a bottle. And that's pretty much what he did. In Empirical's very early days in Copenhagen, a team member returned from lunch with a sandwich and a bag of Doritos. Curiosity led me to turn this snack into a spirit. Upon tasting it, the results were amazing. We burst out into laughter. We shared it with friends, especially chefs. We would give them a little glass without telling them what it was, and the sheer joy on their face made it amazing to watch. I can't imagine somebody being like, try this, not telling me what it was, me taking a sip and it tasting like Doritos in alcohol, and me like being jolly about it. I would be so funny, like trying. Doritos vodka and then and then immediately saying the sheer joy on their face. I want someone to record us taking that shot. <laughs> and I want you to tell me, guys, is that giving sheer joy? It's giving sheer nausea. Okay. Get out of here. So well, we also haven't tried it. It could be sheer joy. I don't even like a normal Dorito. <gasps> Well, there goes our brand, our brand deal. So my goal was to recreate the entire experience of opening a bag of Doritos, getting that signature aroma and following its flavor. This is literally what he said. Followed by its flavor dance across the palate with its unmistakable savory cheesy notes. It's giving Michelin. It's Yeah, he definitely worked for a Michelin star restaurant, which he did. He just watched the bear and he's like, I'm ready to tackle anything. <laughs> So they actually, it has a base of distilled beer, which is Pilsner malt to be precise. And the Doritos were then introduced to allow uh, the infuse into the liquid under exact time and temperature, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? So Pepsi, Doritos. (laughs) Pepsi? Pepsi, How are they involved? PepsiCo owns Doritos. Oh. It's the parent company of Doritos, you silly bitch. It's always a big parent company you never saw coming. So they were actually thrilled, and they were like, hell yeah, brother. So this guy reached out to Doritos. It wasn't the other way around. And he's like, I made this concoction, and it is so crazy. And PepsiCo was like, well, baby, give me a glass, and I'll mix it with Mountain Dew, and we'll we'll sell this shit. Yeah. So they were excited about it, and the release will arrive on shelves next month when this was written. So as you're listening to this, it's hitting shelves, but the cost will be closer to that of caviar. Oh, it's expensive. The limited edition bottle of Empirical X Doritos Nacho Cheese Spirit is set to retail at $65 or more in the U.S. Oh, I don't think that's like totally like unbelievable for like a specialty like limited edition bottle or something. Yeah, I don't think it's that crazy, but... I, if I do, if I'm standing in front of it in the store and I'm looking at the bottles around it that were, are actually practical, I would think twice. Yeah. However, I did accidentally spend $81 on a large fork and a large spoon yesterday. You did do that. That's neither here nor there. Guys, I wish I was kidding. No, you know when you're <laughs> in those shops and there's no price on anything? Just leave. Just, just leave. leave. Just leave because you know what's going to happen. You're going to go up there and you're going to be checking out on their little iPad because we don't have little cash wraps anymore. And they're going to be putting it in the bag and they're going to say $81. And I'm going to say, oh my God, I thought it was going to be $26 max and that would have been pushing it. I'm starting to cry right now. because It's going to be a lovely gift for my somebody hand. else. Should we keep it for ourselves? My hand was shaking and I said, is it you have tap to pay? You have tap to pay? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I did. And I am $81 uh, down the hole. So who I bought that gift for better fucking use it. I agree. Oh, God. Okay. Anyway. I think this is a great time to stock up for the Super Bowl. Wouldn't that be great? That's probably why they're doing it before the Super Bowl. That actually makes complete sense. But they're in Copenhagen. So they like, honestly, it, they're, they don't really give a fuck. They're working with PepsiCo. They're aware. These are business people. They're not, not thinking about it. 
Oh, you're right, Babs. It goes American. Yeah. Well, I think it would be great. You know, you bring that to the Super Bowl. You're going to be the talk of the town. Pretty oh soon, you're going to be Everyone's going to try it. Everyone at the Ice Cream I would Social try is going to try it. They're going to talk about you at Nima Marcus for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my story. And I think we should keep our eyes peeled. Maybe, well, fuck. We're not going back. We're going to have to keep our eyes out around here then when we get back. Yeah, it's probably going to be specialty liquor stores too, so. And if we can find one, we'll definitely do a taste test on Patreon. Oh my God, we're going to look forward. We should get the pre-order then. That would be so fun. I wonder if you can buy it online. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Okay, I'll look into it, campers. I'll look into it. But that's my story. Love it. What have you got for us? Hey, so there was an article that Yahoo News UK fact check that I thought was really cool. So I saw this screenshot on like an Instagram account and it was saying that like um a woman allegedly allegedly was fired after donating a kidney on her boss's behalf and I saw that and I like I saw that I was like is this a real story and then Yahoo News had just like in the UK they had just like fact checked the meme as like an entire article and I was like this is exactly what I'm looking for and I find the whole story to be so bizarre and I want to give you the cliff notes of what I found out. Let's get into it. Okay, so initially the claim is okay, so the, uh, also the article was written by Alex Kazbrak. Thanks Alex. Yahoo News UK. So the claim was a woman donated her kidney to save the life of her boss and was later fired during her recovery. Okay? Uh -huh. So what's true? A woman donated her kidney to the National Kidney Registry as a part of a paired kidney exchange that allowed her boss to be paired with a kidney donor. That exchange occurred on August 2011, long time ago. Of yesteryear. The woman was fired in April 2012. Okay. So not even a year later, she yeah. was fired. So that's like what has happened. So now we're trying to figure out, okay was she why was she fired what is the truth behind this whole story and that's what this whole like fact checking article does okay so the woman was debbie stevens okay and she worked at a car dealership group named atlantic automotive group that operated in the long island area oh neighbors yeah. so it's pretty local to us so essentially what happened was um according to the complaint filed by her her attorney steven offered to donate her kidney to her boss brucia that's her last name in october 2010 after hearing she was searching for a donor brucia allegedly responded you never know i may actually take you up on that offer one day um, and then Stevens had previously worked for Atlantic Auto Group before tempor temporarily relocating and then was rehired shortly after this conversation. So in 2011, Bruce was like, actually, like, I need this kidney because their kidneys were a match. But this kidney match program will basically, like, find someone else that can help in that different situation. So, like, her Stevens donated her kidney to somebody else who then knew somebody that could donate to then Brucia. So it's like a big swap. Like what? Like White Alvin. Yeah, it's giving the Yankee swap of kidneys. Okay. So everybody wins, everybody wins. So she comes back to work after donating her kidney to her boss. And she had complications from her kidney surgery. Essentially, she was having like really bad abdominal pain. She couldn't lift anything heavy. She had to go to the bathroom a lot more than she anticipated, but she went back to work anyways. And she was immediately like met with a hostile work environment. Like Are you kidding? they were trying to make her lift things and being like, oh, you can definitely lift it when it was against like what her doctor said. She, they even got so bad that they were making her ask permission to use the restroom. What is wrong with this place? Before she had to go, like months after she had just donated her kidney to her boss. Wait, what's the issue? Why is everybody being a dick? I think they're just like implying like, they're like, oh, that she was milking it and that it wasn't real. And they were challenging her on like her actual like recovery. Okay, well, she just saved the boss's life. So and they're deck. and they were all being like, "No, well, whatever." Like she's she's like using that as a crutch now to like not work as much. It's only been a couple months. Exactly. So it, it got to a point that they were trying to like move her to a different branch. To inevitably them firing her that following August as what they claimed as poor work performance. But then right before she was like fired for poor work performance, she was already talking to a lawyer mm. about how she her. She wasn't being met with like reasonable work conditions due right. to like her new condition that was happening. Yeah. So this article basically goes into more in depth about how essentially we'll never know because they fought, they like came to a conclusion outside the core. So legally there was never a conclusion of like who was right and who was wrong. But the facts show that in she, your opinion, in, in my opinion and in the court of the opinion, allegedly that she did file suits against the state of New York city and the ADA's office that she was not getting like reasonable work conditions due to her now, like different needs, kind of like a disability. That's crazy. That it was 
within just like a couple of months. I yeah. feel like if they were being like, girl, you're milking it. I feel like it would have to be like after the year marker for someone to fully be out at me with my medical degree would have to be like, oh, yeah, now she's milking it because it's been over a year. And even at that, I'm like, who are you to say? Well, let me read these last two paragraphs. because I think it's actually going to like summarize it better than I am. So, however, when Stevens brought the case to the New York State Division of Human Rights, the body issue... Um, a determination of probable cause that a federal American Disability Act violation occurred to sue a privately co- to sue a private company under an, the ADA. An individual needs the right to sue letter issued by the U.S. Equal in, um, Employment Opportunity Commission. After a parallel investigation by that body, Stephen received an approval to sue under the ADA, leading the lawsuit to describe in this fact check. So, like. She never got to have her lawsuit because they settled outside of court. But basically what this article is proving, allegedly, that all these bodies were backing her up in this lawsuit. Okay. Like the ADA was backing her up. The U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission was backing her up. Like she had a case. Oh. But it never went through because they settled. Because the underlying story about a woman getting fired after donating a kidney on her boss's behalf is factual. And because she was later fired for problems she alleges were related to the kidney transplant surgeries, but that cause of determination was never adjudicated, aka went to court, we rank this claim as mostly true. Interesting way that they are, are yeah. decorating so that. You can't say the whole thing is true because it never went to court. Right. In our but our in our opinion, that's what it is. Yeah, but in our opinion, she was essentially wrongfully fired. What the fuck is wrong with people? Yeah. So I guess is never give a kidney a boss because if you ever get sick, your job isn't gonna wait for you. But your family and friends will. So always put your family and friends before your job. Yeah, I feel like there's got to be a movie there. There has to be a documentary there. I would watch it because there's more to the story that even the article's giving. I need to see. I need to see how these people are interacting in person because what the fuck is going on? Why would you? Why? I want to play Debbie Stevens because I have the Long Island accent on on fleek and I can really give an emotional appeal for the court. I'll play the kidney. The amount of pain and struggle that I suffered working at this automotive group was unheard of and unprecedented. It was a wrongful. Termination suit, and I'm suing. So that was a really that was a little taste of the pinnacle scene from the movie that um I'm currently working on for this. So that was beautiful, but pss, I'm on her side. Me too. Me too. Allegedly, I'll just keep saying that because I don't know if I don't want to get in trouble. But yeah. it was an article, so whatever. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to take a hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. What are you taking a hike this week? What are you telling to take a hike this week? I am telling small cars in a parking garage to take a hike. It's 7.20 a.m. And we are pulling into Terminal C parking garage at LaGuardia. Our flight boards in like an hour. Even though we have TSA pre-check, we have to check our bikes. Why are you giving me that log? Because we've, that's, I, I, you're setting a story and I get that. And I'm not trying to challenge you, but the campers know that you've never been to an airport for a flight like le- later than four hours early. I'm painting a picture. Okay, paint a picture. But Please give me the, my, give the, me my brushes back. Paint it at the Mall of America. That would make more sense. No, we're at LaGuardia. Okay, it's your story. It's 7.20 a.m. My brush is back. Let's circle back on that joke because that was really funny and I want to give you your flowers for that one. I'm Thank sorry. You. Thank you. So we're driving and start, we're looking, we're looking. It is a packed garage even though we did pay for our spot. We know it's here somewhere, but where is it? We're circling like a fucking Scantron in this bitch. <laughs> yeah. We round the corner on like the third floor mm. and there we see it in between two cars. Oh my God, our spot. We inch forward to realize it is a 2015 Chevy Spark with a WWJD bumper sticker. Fuck a Chevy Spark. It is so annoying when you pull into a parking garage that you've already, you're exhausted, you're running late, you're tired, you have to pee, and you're just looking for a spot. No, I know, I know, I agree. You think it's there, and it's a small car parked in between two jumbo size pickup trucks. Yukons, if you will. And I feel like a fool. And I already had like, I was already, I'm gaslighting myself now because I set myself up for that emotion of like relief of, oh my God, we're pulling in, we're going to park. We're good to go. And we're near the elevators. And we're near the elevators. It's a great spot, VIP. Shout out to the Chevy fucking Spark. You got a good parking spot. But now I'm pissed because a parking spot I have no more. Would it make it worse if it was a Kia Soul? Yeah. It would, wouldn't it? It would. I, there is a, there is a solution for this. Have you been in the Providence Place Mall parking lot? Uh, yeah, we went there. The Providence 
The Providence Place small parking lot has this incredible feature. <gasps> yes. Oh my God. We'll talk about that. So when you drive in that parking garage, there are green lights above every single space. And if someone is parked in the space, there's a sensor that turns the light red. So from a distance, you can look down an entire row of cars and see if there's a green space, which means it's empty. And it's never done me wrong. And they've had that since I was in college for years. That's crazy. Why don't more places have that? LaGuardia doesn't have that. Does JFK? No, I, do, I rarely see that, that technology anywhere. And it's a great useful thing to solve this take a hike yeah the whole entire ceiling you can see if there's a green light because it is really difficult and really and it's annoying and sad and upsetting when you're trying to find a spot and it's a little car that you didn't see I and got, it, it I speeds it. up the process for everybody it's like okay yeah, i'm gonna look down this low this row every everybody has a red light i can't go down here so i'm just gonna go on to the next one and it is what it is but my take a hike is going out to the small cars that are taking us and honestly it's not the small cars far you know the chevy spark can't help the fact that it's like it's it's got great gas mileage yeah, of course. Let's give it that. Yeah, but like, let's talk about this for a second. I'm paying five dollars an hour for parking. Where's the money going to, babe? It's a parking garage. Where? Where's? Where, it's not heated, babe. It's an outdoor structure of cement and concrete. Put a little sensor up there. Stop cash grabbing all the money, little grubber. Yeah. Little grubby hands on the money. Yeah. Put put a little sensor up. Put the money to good use. I want to talk to Mister Laguardia or Mrs. No, I want to talk to the Laguardia family, the house of Laguardia. Yeah, where What's are happening they at? there? Okay, so that's my take on hike. I agree. What are you getting pissed at? I hate it when I'm ordering fast food at a drive-thru and I've only ordered one item and the person goes, anything else? <laughs> because now you're challenging me and now you're making me insecure because this is Taco Bell and everything I'm ordering is a la carte. And I have a list of at least seven items and we're on item one. I need them to stop saying that and just say, okay, okay. Okay, like I like the verbal confirmation that you heard it, but when you say anything else after I've said three items, I'm not even gonna get the fourth or the fifth. I'm gonna stop because I'm not getting the Fiesta potato. I'm not getting my cinnamon delights because I'm embarrassed and you're in there and they're they're gaslighting me. What's worse is when they announce the total in the middle of you ordering. Oh my god, that's just rude. Because I'm I'll tell you when I'm done. I'm not being rude about this either. I just I need them to like leave space for me to order what I want to order because I'm contributing to the business. Okay. I and it's not hurting anybody. But what's hurting me is the fact that you keep saying anything else, anything else, anything else. I'll let you know when there's nothing else. I swear to God, I will. <laughs> and I'm on your side with that. I know that they're doing their job, and in most parts, they are just saying it to be polite and it's be a word present. Choice issue. It's, it's a word, a word choice issue. It's, it always comes down to semantics. Does on it's semantics and it's inflection. It's inflection because I, I can feel the tension on the other side. Okay. Anything else? I've ordered a chicken chalupa supreme. I want a chicken quesadilla. I want a cheese roll. But now, anything else? Anything else? Wait, where's my Baja Blast? Where's my dessert? Where's my little potato feature? I have all these things to order. And that's why we stick with Dorda. <laughs> Talk about just hard because neither of us order combos and it's hard to give them like nine different like items. And I get it. I'm being difficult. Everyone's being difficult. We all suck. I just, I just, I don't want to, I already feel guilty about it. Okay. Survivor does not want me preparing while eating Taco Bell. So it's a good thing I'm not even eating it currently right now, but I wouldn't be able to order anyways because it's so hard to order the drive through Wait, which one's worse? Anything else or small cars and parking garages? The parking garages. Really? Yeah. I'm going with mine. Okay. Fine. <laughs> I'll stand <laughs> firmly in my parking spot. And I'll stand firmly in my drive through truth. Take a hike. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle campaign. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week. Jonathan, who are you giving your first crush of the week for 2024? Like, who's getting, like, the, I don't know, the inaugural yearly annual first? I'm giving it not to a who, but to a what. Do tell. My camper crush of the week are Scandinavian swimmers. You love those little swimmers. I'm not talking about Bill Skarsgård's baby chowder. I'm talking about the little Trader Joe's. What? That was quite possibly <laughs> the most graphic thing you've ever said. Baby chowder? Did you make that up? Have you heard that before? You're laughing, but I'm horrified. <laughs> I'm, I feel like a prude right now because that was really graphic to say. Yeah. Did you make that up? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I've heard it before. Same with baby gravy. But I'm not talking about that. I'm what sick. I am talking about, stop being so sick. I said I'm not talking about that. And you already someone, said it. 50% of this podcast is still talking about it. <sighs> Moving on. Thank you. Go. So Scandinavian swimmers are Trader Joe's, <laughs> Trader Joe's version of Swedish fish. First off, let's talk about how they dodged that trademark while still communicating what it is. Swedish fish. 
Scandinavian swimmers. Like, I'm not joking. Contractually, I cannot talk about this subject. I will keep everything to myself. I support you because this is your topic. Are we going to get in trouble if I talk about this? I, I'm not talking about it. You're your own person. Okay. You're not under contract. I am under a grocery store contract. Okay. And it So would... <laughs> you keep going. So if I don't contribute, I'm not, not saying anything. But for that reason, I am stepping out of this. So keep going. And it, I think they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're also fine. You don't have to mince words you can say what you want but uh their other stores also have good choices <laughs> uh, options too it's not your brand deal babe it's my okay. palms are sweating we've already like it's the beginning of the year and we're already having legal issues well we already it's because i'm talking about i'm talking about that auto groups legal <sighs> issues it's karma thank god we're an llc no you're not it's fine, fine. okay fine. well and that's that on that and we'll leave it at that my camper crush of the week i can't say it again figure it out oh my god that's so funny okay so anyway what's your camper girls of the week um the bachelor new season and it's not what you're thinking it's just because we know people on it we can't stop talking about reality tv well this is crazy guys you're not going to believe this okay so the new bachelor that's coming out i think it's coming out in february Let's talk about The Bachelor himself first and how you kind of know him, who's being The Bachelor. Let me be really clear. I do not know him. Well, I've you know- never met him. I, you could say his name and I would have been like, who? I honestly couldn't pick him out in a crowd. But it is interesting because I do have a connection yeah, to him. Yeah, that's what it really is. Yes. It's it's like three degrees, like how we have with Nicole Byer is how I have with Joey. I think Is it Joey or one, is it Joe? I think, I think this one might be closer. He was in my cousin's frat. And that's and and that's pretty much all I know. I'm friends with the old frat mates from where he is from. And he lives about 10, 15 minutes away from my parents. <laughs> if you ask anything about Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, Jonathan, everything is relation to 10 to 15 minutes away from his parents. Have you guys seen how tiny the state is? <laughs> it's huge. But I, I, he's always lying about that. But no, it, I'm not. But this, this I'm not. Royersford, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay, so you're saying that he was in your cousin's frat and that he lives 10 to 15 minutes, quote unquote from your parents maybe so, less maybe nine you have probably been in the same bar as him uh no i didn't go that. out in westchester like that okay but anyway i yeah but that is it is oddly close how the connection is to me even though i do not know him well my connection is even crazier okay mm. one of the girls who's on like the show i went to high school with her she was a grade below me um, her name is Sydney. She is so gorgeous. She's so pretty. She's so nice. She's amazing. She owns a vintage store in downtown Newport, Rhode Island. She opened up herself, like, as a young business entrepreneur. Like, she's, like, 23, 24. Yes, yeah, she's 28 now. Don't be shy. What's the name? It's called Folk Vintage. I've never been. Mm. I've always wanted to go, and I just, I don't know why I've never been. It's, like, I feel stupid about it. But I, like, I've always supported her online. She always supports me online. And she, like, sneakily just, like, posted it and was, like, guys, I'm going to be on Bachelor. It's, like, what the fuck? It's pretty crazy to, like, know somebody that's going to be on a show like that. But you suspected it a while back. I remember you were, like, oh, this girl, she's going to be on the thing. Like, how did you know that that was good? happening so i forget the lore of why i think it was like small town gossip of how, how she was going to be on it because she definitely told people but there is a little bit of tea that me and my friends were talking about on snapchat today about the sis about how we think she's going far on the show okay not me with insider insider knowledge okay <laughs> she again entering legal issues let's just go for it no this one's fine because it's like not my fault that i know people that know people okay so her best friend her best friend from high school had her wedding shower in November. And my best friend say looked up that the filming was somewhere between September and November. Mm -hmm. And she would have only have missed her best friend's shower if she was still in production. So if they started filming somewhere in that time frame, that means that she was on the show like doing well. But here's the other thing. Yeah. She wasn't really in the promo. And she that's was, what I find interesting. So like, not like in the, like they showed her promo photos, like under the cast announcement, but in the little clip showing like the segments of the show, apparently I haven't seen it, but everyone's saying that she wasn't in it. Interesting. So. So maybe her and her best friend are just beefing. No, so. they're not. They're not. They're not. Cause she went to the wedding. No, they're definitely not. Oh. They're definitely close. They're wicked close. They're still close. Oh. Like, no, yeah. Well, why don't, can you DM her? Why don't you FaceTime her and just be like, Hey girl, what <sighs> episode do you leave? Or did you win? She can't tell. She's, she's on her contract. And you know that. And don't All these me, contracts and are don't so put me in that position. Don't I'll see on her. Okay, so I am really excited for her. I think she's really amazing, and I don't know. And I'm gonna be honest right here. Is she going on with the attention to find love? 
Maybe. Is she going on the attention to grow herself and her career and her business and her own brand? Yes. And what's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? I want her to go in there and blow up her own social media and blow up her own business and continue to be a bad bitch. It's I support this woman. I support her. She's a good person. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy for her. But I just think it's interesting that we both knew a connection to the show. Yeah. And that's my question of the week. I think it's crazy. Maybe we can go on um a double date. You think? Where would it be? And would it be in New- would it be in Newport Island or would it be back in Royersford? It would be in Flagstaff. How about at Salsa Brava? How about somewhere in the middle? Meet us in New York. I'm excited for her. I think it's so cool. I wouldn't do that kind of show, but as someone who's going to be on Survivor, I'm really excited for my cast announcement. So. And I think it's so fun that Survivor and The Bachelor have been out for so fucking long. And they're still going. And you and I, well, yeah, but you and I just jumped on the train now. And honestly, I don't, I don't first. <gasps> Oh my God, not us getting it. I got an email from LegalZoom. <gasps> Stop like, it. You're being sued. <laughs> I just got an email from Survivor. You made it. We want Stop. you. Stop. Shut up. So that we're jumping on the train. But anyway, I don't think I'm going to be on the um, on the Bachelor train. If you want to watch it, like, and I happen to be in the room, go for it. But I don't think, I'm just, I don't think I'm into it. I'm so not. So if it was a girl you went to high school with, would you have watched it if you actually knew a girl from high school on it? If I knew her. Okay, I'm I'm that kind of person. I think a lot of our campers, had they had gone to high school with somebody on a reality show, they'd watch it. Josh, Josh went to high school with that girl on that Netflix show and we watched that first episode. It's crazy. I, I think it's crazy. I've never seen a peer of mine on a reality TV show and there has to have been people who have. There's so many reality shows now. Yeah. So I think it's interesting and that's why it's my crush of the week. Yeah. And you know what? I fully support it. So if you're watching it when I'm in the room, I'll watch it with you. Why don't we? I'll watch the episode she's in. Good luck, Sydney. I think she's going all the way. That's okay. my girl. So I guess I'll be watching like, the whole season. Reason. Like I don't talk to her like that, but obviously I'm such like a like an <laughs> asshole. I'm like now I'm like, oh my god, go girl. Well, that's how we are as people, okay? Like, yeah, but you're cheerleading. Yeah, I am cheerleading, and I I want her to win. I want her to. I want. I don't necessarily like, want. I don't care if she wins, but I want her to get what she wants out of it, which I think is going to be bigger representation because as a business owner, as someone who wants to like grow their brand, is not what everybody wants to like continue to thrive and i want that for her i support small business i support women in business i support women in stem <laughs> i support small business like abc family <laughs> no i support her small business bitch <laughs> oh, her I, I you were saying small business the only small business i support for network tv is cbs as my parent company as a member of survivor 47 <laughs> i'm supporting cbs so yes cbs what song's been sucking your head all week Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. This is the part of the show where we share songs that have been stuck in our head all week. And we're so excited to share them with you. There's, as always, in the episode description, um, the free Spotify playlist is there. That has all of our songs in the YouTube playlist. We're reminding everybody because it's the top of the year. But I can't even stop thinking about how this episode might get us sued. And it might. I feel like, what's libel mean? Uh, I worked for a lawyer for about five years, and I should know. You know it's crazy. You, we were talking about how you thought I could be a lawyer. And then we considered, we continuously talked about things that we should not be talking about the entire time. Absolutely. We talked about legal cases. We talked about things that I am not allowed to talk about. We talked about TV shows, productions that probably are under NDAs. And now with Cam Songs, I'm honestly, I'm just going to play the full song. Because if we're going to get sued, you're going to listen to my entire Cam Song. Yeah, might as well add a copyright claim on here because we're already getting sued for everything else. Yeah. Um, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with that we're entering 2024. So fucking messy. We're messy <laughs> Marvins this year at Camp Shady Birch. Campers, this is the year of mess for all of us. We're getting creepy. We're getting spooky. We're just getting like, I don't know, I like that about us. This is the year of breaking NDAs. Oh my Let's God. just be crazy. Break that seal NDA. Who cares, campers? <laughs> Okay. What is your song this week, babe? Um, so my camp song is Forget Me Too by MGK featuring Halsey. Oh my god, we were just talking about it at lunch. We were, yeah, we were at lunch yesterday and I started to sing it, and I'm like, that is a hashtag certified banger, as the kids these <sighs> days would never say. Should we sing a little? Um, go. You want me to forget you? you. Okay, okay, forget me too. You tell me you hate me, baby. Yeah, I bet you do. God damn it. That song is so good. And I'm honestly not really an MGK fan, but I did enjoy that album. I don't really like him as a person. He's kind of annoying. Wait. He's kind of cringy. 
What? You love, to be honest, you, I remember you loving that album. I did. Cause you know why? You it did. came out in 2020. It was like October. So everybody was going crazy. Like COVID had already been around. We've been so sick and sick of everything. So this album came out and I was just like, okay, this is what happened after Rain On Me. We got a little bit of Lady Gaga. There was a lot of good music during COVID. Yeah. We were really so, with some bangers. So um, I listened to it on repeat and mm. the music video. My I God. love the music video. So let me tell you a little fun facts about this. Okay. So it is, Halsey is in it. Uh, I don't really, I don't know. I don't like love Halsey. Yeah. Jonathan expressed to me at lunch yesterday that he is not a Halsey fan, which I think is kind of rude because I actually do. I, I'm going on record as the counselor who approves of Halsey. Ashley. <clears throat> so we were talking about it and I said, I don't really know a lot of her songs. However, I like her when she features on a song. That is so rude to say. And honestly, <laughs> that is so rude to say. I like it when she's a feature. She's that, like, okay, fuck me then. <laughs> fuck my music, right? Yeah. And I don't know what it is. And it, does that make me a bad person? What was that sound that her cigarettes and tiny liquor bottles just tell you inside her new balenciaga i don't know that one well that's like her original song oh okay that's we'll right. get back to that well, that's guys. because i don't listen to her original music and maybe i should maybe i should so travis barker is on the drums and we love that i'm so sick of him he's like he's gotten too much exposure from me i'm gonna go out i'm gonna go on the record and say i'm not into him right now so Travis actually suggested that Halsey be on the track. Actually, now I'm into him. Him, <laughs> <laughs> him and MGK had recorded like a rough cut in a session. And he's like, we need a rock check on this, love. He's not. He's from California. Yeah, so he doesn't that? speak like that at all. So they call up Halsey. They play the song on the phone. She, while on the phone, writes her verse five minutes. The next day. Comes into studio, records, two takes between 10 to 15 minutes. And that was it. And learning that did not turn you into a Halsey fan? Honestly, it kind of did. They, they used the second take. They used all of the second take. So the first take was a warm up. And then everything you hear in the song that's her voice was one take. Wow. Yeah. Which is, I wasted all this time waiting around for your phone calls every night. And then there's the music video. Is she in the pool or is he in the pool? Um, I don't think they're in the pool. There's a pool in the backyard. And it's empty and they're skateboarding around it. No, like, it's felt. Oh. I there's, don't, I don't know the it's like it, they're in like an empty-ish house and they're throwing around a magic eight ball and then they cut to the inside of the magic eight ball and they're in the blue liquid. I think this is going to be the year of the magic eight ball. Yeah. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. But the second she walks in to sing her verse, she kicks open the door and she has her long black hair and her fucking Abby Dawn mini skirt. What's an Abby Dawn mini skirt? What is that? It, it's Avril Lavigne's company, Abby Dawn. I don't know if it was Abby Dawn, but it's pretty much the only thing You're that I so could relate cool. it to. Either that or, or scotch tape. It's giving like a little bit of a, I guess I could call it a kilt. But anyway, that's besides the point. She looks so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The way she's flipping her hair around. Then when she puts the cowboy hat on, I could fucking kick a door off the hinges. She looks so good. I love it. Yeah. You also wear really big boots. You definitely kick any door you wanted to. I could. I could. I, I could. love that song. I yeah. do. Good song, babe. Good song. Let me see if I have any other fun packs that are on here. Um, bu -bu -bu. Yeah, no, that's pretty much it. This is a good song. And it's actually like a really powerful song for the beginning of the year. Like that's a that, that's a good driving song. That is a good, good driving song. And I was like, does anybody hate the song? So I was looking at the YouTube comments and I didn't find a sit. Everybody was like, this song is a fucking bop. Like, I'm listening to this at the end of 2023. Still a banger. People were like, Halsey needs a, a punk rock album. Does she have one? I don't know. I don't really listen to her. But her voice in that, it matches. It matches. It works. Yeah. It's, and that's what everybody was saying. It's what she needs to be doing. I think we'd love her a little. We'd like that a lot. But I like her a lot. I love the part where she goes, hey, you. God, I want to listen. Yeah. Can we end the podcast right now so I can listen to it again? We're I think I'm a Halsey done. fan. I'm a Halsey stan. Yeah, I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're finding the light on this podcast because you should. You should be entering this year with love for Halsey and not hate in your heart. And I don't have hate in my heart. I think it's just the picture. What I have in my head of her is is Malsey. and I think people love Malsey, and that's that picture or the video clip of her singing. Um, oh my God, she was singing Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, because she's always been a punk rocker chick. And then she was in the song with Travis. Wow. Wow, full circle for her and full circle for you. Yeah. Finding finding your love of Halsey. This is this is the year of circles. Mm, I like that. Magic eight ball. Circle. Oh my god. It's the connections we make here at Camp Shady Birch that really bind us together as a tribe. A tribal member, aka survivor. Um, my uh, edition tape oh is my now god, live. It just doesn't end. Binding together, like, cause I'm backed up. 
Okay. Let's, let's move on. Edit that yeah, out. Yeah, let's edit that out. <laughs> what is your camp song? My camp song is so random. Okay. <laughs> it's um Should Have Been Us by Tori Kelly. Mm-hmm. So we were at a burlesque show um for like Christmas, um, Christmas time with our friend Josh and his roommate Cass. And we had such a great time. And during the intermission of the show, that song played and I had not heard it in so long, but the lyrics and the feeling just came back to me like a glass of cold water on a hot summer day. It just rained on me. It was just, it's, do you know the song? Are you familiar with it? Yeah. Cause you and I, you were sitting in your seat and me and Josh were waiting for our drink. So we weren't together, but we all had the same reaction at the same time, but it was also a remix. They started playing Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift. And then when it switched, my heart skipped a beat. It was, am- it, no, it was an amazing remix. Yeah. They had a great remix that whole night. They did. Can I sing a little bit to remind the campers if they're like, if they're having a little bit of memory loss? Only if you let me join. Okay. Thinking it could be different, but maybe we missed it. Yeah, I'm building, guys. Think it could be different. It could, it could, insert chorus. It, it should have been, been us. Should have been a fire. Should have been the perfect storm. It should have been us. Could have been the real thing. Now we'll never know for sure. Oh. And then we'll stop it there. Yeah, well, because we could go on. Because I could have said, we. I, I could have finished it. We were crazy, but amazing. Maybe we both know. <laughs> Maybe we both know. Uh, so Tori Kelly is someone who I love. I do categorize Tori Kelly's music as Cole's Cash. <laughs> Tori Kelly okay. is Cole's cash because yeah. there's just certain music that is it's Cole centric. It's it's giving gross. It's giving local grocer. Like who else is Cole's cash music? Um, Sarah Bareilles. Sarah Bareilles. Michael Bublé. Not, Natasha Battingfield. Yes, these are all classic Cole's department store. Ask. One Republic. One Republic. And there's nothing wrong with Cole's cash music. I personally love Cole's cash music, but Maybe. I think Tori Kelly like is it, she's embedded in the genre. Put me in candies. I'm I'm loving it. Put me in candies. Let me get a silly little toaster for twenty nine ninety nine on on layaway. They got Hamilton Beach out the ass. Oh my god! They, always on sale. They always have Hamilton Beach. No, so I'm obsessed with her. But um, I love her. That song came out in twenty fifteen. Fun facts about Tori Kelly. Mm-hmm. I couldn't like really place her in my mind. Like what happened? Like where she came from? Yeah, I'm, I was literally just about to ask you where did she come from. She's such a talent. She's a natural born star. She's always been like pushing for the stardom. Like mm-hmm. I don't know how else to say it. Like she was just doing a lot of shows to like get the stardom going. So she was a former YouTuber. So I think when she wasn't auditioning for a reality TV competition, she was on YouTube. She was on this show in 2004 called America's Most Talented Kids. Um, She won. She beat out Hunter Hayes, who's currently a singer. And before we recorded this podcast, I was going to go in and figure out what his popular song was. And I couldn't do it. So it'd be lovely if as I continue, you can look that up. For yeah, me. I could look it up because I thought you know, that you've heard his name before. Let's it's just on- pause for a second and find it. Guys, we just looked it up and I actually have no idea who he is. He's giving country music superstar and I love that for him, but that's not my jam unless it's Carrie Underwood. I thought it sounds like a porn website. Hunter Hayes. Mm, there's definitely a porn star named Hunter Hayes. Mm, that's probably what I'm thinking of. Yeah, no, I understand the confusion, but they were on a show in 2004 together and they did compete and she did kick his ass. 2004? Yeah, as a wow. child. The show was called 2004. No, the show was called America's Most Talented Kids, which was in 2004. Okay. So she did that. And then she was on American Idol. What's she? In 2009. She only made it past Hollywood rounds. So that was 2010. And then 2016, she was already a superstar at that point. She put her debut album out. She was on The Voice as a guest, like, helper when they go to, like, those, like, battle rounds and they have, like, people come in for, like, Team Adam Levine. Okay. She did that. Um, guess who her manager is? Is or currently or was? I'm not sure about the current status. Guess. I don't know many managers. Scooter Braun. Oh. So she was under that whole umbrella. How is he managing so many people? I don't know. I think he's swiping them up when they're young. Like, like the young internet talent. I think that's what he does. He's a creep. Um, also, she was on the mask. <laughs> she was on the mask Singer. She made it to the finale in 2020, at season four. I want you to guess her animal. Oh, I shouldn't even said that. Oh, um, was she? It could be anything because they're, they're so creative on that show. A pelican. So close. Fuck. A seahorse. 
Oh, we talked about that seahorses. Oh, we can't go back to that segment. Yeah, yeah, we can't. You were, yeah, but you were in the ocean, oceanic vibes. Yeah. Who would you, what would you want to be on the mass Singer? Actually, let's, let's shelf that and bring that back because I want a really thoughtful answer for you. Okay, yeah. I thought about it or not because they, they had a popcorn lady the other day and I was like, okay, so you really can be any anything. Oh my God. Wendy Williams will go down in history as like the best. She was just the mouth. Like how fun was She that? was the lips. Oh my God. Also the guy who sang Rainbow. What was he? He was an athlete. I don't know what he was, but oh my God, that. If you want to cry on command, if you're ever cast in a movie where you have to cry on command, say, give me one second, director. Go to the bathroom. Watch the video of the mass Singer, this man singing Rainbow by Casey Musgraves, and you will be ready for your scene. No, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to season six of The Crown. I'm going to go to the episode of Ritz, and I'm going to watch the Queen's sister depart for the last time. And that's what's going to get me to the emotional moment. Okay. Okay. That's what really gets me there. Mm. But right now we're talking about Tori Kelly and we're talking about Malsey. Um, great songs this week. Yeah, oh my God. Such good. You guys are so welcome. This was a really fun episode. Technically, we recorded it in the previous year, but I feel like this energy that we just brought, I feel like it's really what we're going to try to bring every single week to Camp Shady Words. What we will be bringing. Yeah. It's all about fun, laughter, drama, messiness, and camaraderie. We are a team here. We are a tribe. We are Camp Shady Birch, and we're going to be here till the end of time. And we love you for being here. So thank you for listening. And I hope you had a great holiday and I hope we have a great year together. I know we will. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you want us to read your emails, you can send them into campcounselorspodcast.com or campcounselorspod at gmail.com. Look out for those every Monday. And if you haven't yet, please rate us five stars. Please rate us a little review if it's not too much. And if you have, I love you. Thank you for doing that. And if you haven't, you don't have to if you don't want to, but it would be nice. But yeah. we, don't, we understand if you don't want to. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. And with that being said, for the first time this year, Lights, Lights Out Campers. campers.